this fake news constantly and then returning to it. At the third debate, Chris Wallace asked Donald Trump, but not Hillary Clinton, something that I pointed out with annoyance at the time, um, will you accept the results of the election should you lose? And Trump said, I think quite reasonably, well, I, I we'll have to wait to see what happens. Um, the entire universe exploded. The media, every newspaper in the country, MSNBC spent a week. He's trampling on our Constitution. He's ripping up democracy. This is the most direct assault on democracy this, this nation has ever seen. We must accept the peaceful results of, of a transition of power. Um, which side now has refused to accept the results of the election? 100 percent the media, 100 percent the Democratic Party. Um, Hillary Clinton, his opponent, has announced she's joined the resistance. The resistance, Mark Simone. That is a <laughs> militaristic term. If Trump had lost the election and, and later turned around and said, I am joining the resistance, that would be a dog whistle to the militias, to right-wing fascists. And in fact, we have left-wing fascists armed, masked, going around in groups, beating up conservatives, police being told to stand down so that the left can beat up conservatives. Um, I'm, I'm attaching a map of violence against Trump supporters. Do you know Scott Baio, who spoke at, at, at Trump's convention, yeah. was attacked by a woman at his, at his child's school a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, I think it was? Attacked, physically attacked by a woman, the wife of the drummer for the Chili Peppers, um, grabbing him, pushing him, and screaming, um, well, I can't say it, but grab well, her P word, grab her P word, grab her P word, grab her P word, over and over and over again. I don't know. He's an actor. Lots of people know who he is. I didn't when I met him in Hollywood. But very interesting. That, that, that story. Do you even know that story? And that is minor compared to the hospitalizations, the blood. This is not just a bloodless coup that the left is pulling off through the bureaucracy, through the Democrats, and mostly through the media. But they are in trying to incite violence against both Trump and his supporters. Yeah, and it's uh, interesting. I don't know anybody that heard that Scott Baio story. And this James Hodgkinson, the shooter, his Facebook page, making it clear he's a liberal Democrat. And a lot of people are printing out that page because uh, uh, you can assume Facebook will take it down pretty soon. Yes, and, and the media simply won't admit it. it is, it's Orwellian, the world we are living in, um, which, which leads me to my next point, and that is Trump has got to get rid of Robert Mueller um, and Rod Rosenstein, who has now admitted his incompetence. Um, he has to hire an outside person and, and another team of lawyers. I don't know, aren't we paying Rod Rosenstein's salary? Aren't we paying the salaries of hundreds, literally hundreds of lawyers at the Department of Justice? We now know from the leaks um, there are exactly five people at most under investigation who have anything to do with Trump anyway. Um, there is the Never Trumpers, the Hillary campaign, the FBI itself, and um, BuzzFeed and CNN who need to be um, um, investigated for the only actual evidence we have of Russian interference in the election, and that is the Trump dossier. But as for Trump's side of things, it's, it's five people, some of whom had nothing to do with his campaign, only one of whom is working for the White House. It's Michael Flynn, Carter Page, Roger Stone, um, Jared Kushner, uh, oh, and Paul Manafort. Um, Rod Rosenstein can't handle the investigation of five people. He can't oversee that investigation. No, what they are doing is they are putting the establishment, never Trumpers, within the executive branch itself. It's not enough that they have the media, that they have both the Republican and the Democratic Party, that they have the deep state, uh, that they have the losing presidential candidate. No, now they're going to make Trump use part of his executive branch so that he will be continually responding, he and his cabinet members, and and his employees continually responding to just this never-ending stream of fake stories being pumped out. And and the fact that Robert Mueller is hired, um, look, he may be a fine fellow, but he's hired a bunch of Hillary never-Trumpers. Well, you know, there's um, a legal correspondent, Greg Jarrett, he's pointing out there's two laws that the special counsel cannot have a personal or political relationship with anybody being investigated. Nobody's had a longer personal political relationship with Comey than Robert Mueller. 
No, that's true, too. But the whole point of his appointment, I mean, it made some sense at the time, irritating, but it did because the whole Russian con- collusion thing is crackpot. It is a crackpot conspiracy theory that, you know, Rosie O'Donnell would come up with. But but leaving that aside, it at least made some sense when Trump we, we, the public, were not being told, thank you, James Comey, that Trump was not under investigation. Well, then there seemed to be a conflict. There's no conflict now. Trump isn't under investigation, and in fact, the entire world knows who is possibly under investigation. The five people I just named, Roger Stone had nothing to do with the campaign. The other ones, Carter Page never even met Donald Trump. Manafort worked for Trump for, what, six weeks on the campaign? None of them have anything to do with the White House. Flynn is been fired. Kushner, a a tertiary figure here. What, there's some huge conflict with with Rod Rosenstein? He can't oversee that investigation? No, the whole point of this is to put a never-Trumper within the executive branch to make sure that Trump is prevented from ever fulfilling the promises he made that put him in the White House. 